Hey everyone, Donnie Gladfelter from the CAD Geek blog, sharing with you a first look at AutoCAD 2012. Now to get started, I figured I'd take a look at the all-new Rectangular Array command that we find inside of this latest release from Autodesk. Now, if you're familiar with the Array command in earlier releases of AutoCAD, you know that in order to use it effectively, we really had to know a lot of very precise information, such as the exact number of columns and rows and certainly the spacing between them. Otherwise, I found myself starting from scratch just to make even the subtlest tweak. Instead of AutoCAD 2012, Autodesk has made Arrays a much more intelligent object. I figured we'd take a look at them real quick. So in this case, I have a desk that I want to fill throughout this entire room, and I'll go ahead and use my rectangular array command for that. I'll go ahead and find that, of course, up here on the Home tab under Modify. I'll choose the Array tool and finally that rectangular array tool. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and pick this desk and press enter. Now in the past I would have been presented with this dialog box really prompting me to enter in some of that information such as the number of rows and columns in addition to the spacing between all of them. However you'll notice that instead of that dialog I now have a much more dynamic uh, command line here and in this case if I just move my cursor you'll notice that AutoCAD dynamically gives me this preview of in this case the number of rows and columns that I'm going to create and so I'm very able very quickly able to establish exactly how many rows and columns I need in this particular example. So just a quick left mouse click allows me to place that number of rows and columns and likewise a second click will allow me to place the spacing for these. Again at this point this is very conceptual however one of the probably coolest thing about arrays inside of 2012 is that they are now associative and so that means if I pick one object all of the objects in that array now select. And this means that I'm able to modify the arrays in a much more uh, dynamic fashion. So in this case, I want to probably dial in a more precise spacing in between the desks. So maybe I want to, in this case, give this a dimension of, say, 10 feet. So I can just use direct distance entry to do that. And we'll go ahead and adjust the columns here. In this case, maybe, I don't know, 18 feet probably sounds good here. So again, just with a couple clicks, I'm able to very precisely adjust the spacing in between these objects. Now, if I take a look at the desk, you'll notice that this desk was probably intended for two. However, I only have one chair in there right now. Now, we're able to sort of dig into this array object using the Edit Source button right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'll go ahead and just pick one of the objects inside of that array. And in this case, I can just come up here to my Mirror tool select that chair. I'll go ahead and create a new one just by mirroring the original one here. So just with a couple clicks there, I now have that second chair. And as you'll see, all of the arrayed objects reflect that change. Likewise, I can actually use my multifunctional grips if I wanted to. Maybe I want to, in this case, put a sort of a curved edge on the front of the desk. And notice as I'm moving that all of the arrayed objects update as well. So I'll go ahead and make that into a nice curved desk like so. And when I'm done, I can just go ahead and save these changes. And as you can see, that updates in my drawing very quickly. Now, rectangular arrays are great, but inevitably, I must always have something conflicting with them. And this is really no different. In this case, I have a couple structural columns that um, land dead center inside of a couple of my desks here. Now, sort of a secret with rectangular arrays inside of 2012 is that if I press and hold the control key, and then I pick on the individual objects. Notice just those two objects select. And so with that, I can just press the delete key and very quickly delete them from that array. Now, even though I pulled out those two arrayed objects, you'll notice that all of this, uh, or this entire array set is still associative. I can still use all of the grips to make all the changes that I highlighted so far. So there you have it, a very quick look at what I think is a very exciting tool inside of AutoCAD 2012, and that is the Rectangular Array Command. I invite you to join me over at thecadgeek.com for many more tips and tricks just like this one, and certainly stay tuned for many more new features inside of AutoCAD 2012. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you soon.